right, peace, 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 peace. All glory, honor, and praise to my Father in heaven in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Today I'm going to talk about what do you do when you feel like God doesn't love you. I'm going to talk about what we do when we feel like God doesn't love us. For anyone that doesn't know, my three-hour class number seven, King David, a man after God's own heart, is available now. If you're interested in that, it'll be for, it's for Diamond members on Patreon or my direct class members that sign up through the website. And um, Or if you want to just get it directly, you can email me at eddiefuse at gmail.com. So anyway, let's get into the topic. What do you do when you feel like God doesn't love you? This is one of those things that I find that it's a common thing that comes across people that decide to walk the way of righteousness and follow Jesus Christ. I don't know. Sometimes it can be a, an, a, an attack from an unseen, unclean force, right? Sometimes it could be being pruned, which I'm going to talk about all these things. But sometimes it's the enemy coming around us trying to convince us that God doesn't love us. Because you know that it ain't God. It ain't God trying to convince you that he doesn't love you. That, that wouldn't be God trying to make, you know, God doesn't want you to feel like he, he does love us, right? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whomever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So God surely loves you. He loves you more than you love yourself. He loves you more than you love anything, right? Because God is love. It is that to the love of God, that God is all he was, he is, he will be, and he will be loved. That love is always there. So if you ever wondered if God loves you, God loves you a lot. Do you love God? Though? That's one of the questions that I would ask. Because one of the things that happens, we have to realize that, that if your love run cold when things ain't right, then is that ever love? We have a lot of musicians that make these songs about um, if I, you know, if, 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 if this happened to me, would you still love me? If this happened to me, would you still love me? Do this to us so I know that you, if you love me. So what's the sentiment there? The sentiment is that if your love is real, then none of these things matter. If your love is real, it doesn't matter if I provide for you. You still gonna love me. If your love is real, it doesn't matter if I do this. You still gonna love me. If you're, it's right. So, are, is your love real for the Almighty God? So, whenever you starting to feel like, does God love you? First, ask yourself: Is my love for God real? Right. Because if your love for God is real, then you, whatever you feeling, whatever your circumstances are, whatever the pressures may feel like they are, that's not going to change the love you have for God. The love you have for God will be regardless of what you may see externally. For the love of God that we have is in Jesus Christ. And if we abide in Christ, we abide in God's love. Right? So that, that's not going to change. So if anytime you feel like God ain't loving you, that's a reflection of you not loving God. Because you think that love is based on external circumstances and feelings love is more than a feeling right god loves us as his own children i tell people all the time that a lot of times what we're doing is we're asking god for candy for breakfast sometimes in our life we want candy for breakfast and we get discouraged because our father is telling us that we can't have candy for breakfast if you have a child and your child says daddy mommy can i have candy for breakfast, you're going to say, no, you can't have candy for breakfast, but you can have an actual full good meal. You can have this, but you can't have candy. And if that child begins to pout and scream and be spoiled and feel like you don't love them, you're not going to say to the child, I mean, you know, what I mean, the, the child, what I'm saying is that child, that, that child feeling like you don't love them because they won't give you candy is a false feeling. The child is just going through a moment. They're going through a moment in time. However, no matter how much they scream, no matter how much they pout, no matter how much they shout, if you love that child, you're still not going to give them candy for breakfast. No matter how much you love, if you, if you don't love the child, and once they start screaming and pouting, you're going to say, all right, here, take the candy then. I wanted, I wanted to teach you to be healthy, but if you're going to pout, then I, I, don't, I don't care if you're about your health anymore. Just eat the candy for breakfast. I don't care. I don't care about your principles anymore because you want it so bad. All right, then forget it then. Then, then hurt yourself then. That ain't love, right? So sometimes when we pout you know, or when we getting impatient or when we waiting and, and sometimes it may feel a little heavy or when we're going through things and learning things, the reality is it's us not loving God. It's not about God not loving us. Is a lot of times it's us not loving God. And we're not recognizing that sometimes God love, God's love is denying you what you may think you may be good for you. Because a lot of times we could be asking God for things that are going to harm or affect our relationship with him and our ability to remain and receive eternal life in a negative way. Right? We could be asking for things that seem good to us, but they're actually harmful to us in the end. 
So that's one of the com. This, that's one of the most. Com- I read. A, I read. A, um, I was. I was on YouTube. A YouTube comment a little while ago, maybe a couple of months ago, and I seen a woman had commented. She said, "Yeah, you know, I, I backslid because I started to feel like God didn't love me, and that kind of made me fall away from the gospel. And I, I backslid and went back into the world, looking for I, what I'm assuming would be love. But the, the the thing that has to be realized and recognized is." This is a common test. This is a common, I don't want to call it a test. This is a common trap. It's a common trap of the enemy come whispering and pressuring you, making you feel like God doesn't love you. But are you able to see God's love through you maybe not feeling so good? So one of the things I learned to do in those moments when you're feeling like you can't feel the love of God, cry out to God. Cry out, worship, break through. What I find is that you can, there's moments where you can break through the Pressure is thick. The weight is thick. Things is feeling heavy. Things is feeling overbearing. You don't know how you're going to manage. You don't know how you're going to handle it. But if you stay in Jesus Christ, if you call in the name of Jesus Christ, if you worship and praise and call out to God, and even against against the feeling you have is you don't, how could I worship when I feel like God doesn't love me, right? That's, that's the feeling. It's a false feeling because love ain't dependent on how you feel, right? Um, so, but you will say, how could I, how could I worship God? Cause I, I feel like you don't love me. It's hard. I can't bring myself to worship. Then you don't love God. If you can't bring yourself to worship God, if you can't bring yourself to pray because you feel unloved, then you don't love. Let me make sure that, that that's clear. But if you do love, what you'll learn is that if you, in those moments when you don't feel loved, you start loving. A lot of times that love will come right back in. Right. But the, you have to learn how to love when you're not being loved. That's the whole point of Jesus said, what, what, what good are we if we only do good to those who do good to us? Even even the pagans do that. Right. An evil man still buys his children gifts for Christmas. An evil man still loves his children. Right. A guy that treats the whole world wicked might still love his own children. So what good is that of us? If you can only love when things is good, then you don't, then you can't love. If you can only love when you feel in love back, then you can't love. But a lot of times what we don't realize is that what, what we be, what, what, how we, how women treat us sometimes in a relationship is how, or in a marriage or whatever, or whatever it may be, is how we treat God. Like they want us to be responsible. They want us, they want us to love them even when they're not being lovable. They want us to love them even when they're not loving us back. When, and you know how women feel. You ever have a woman say to you, like you just took her out to a wonderful dinner. You guys went out, had a good time, laughed and smiled and hung out and, and everything was beautiful. You just bought her a whole new house and bought her a car. And once you get back, she says, but do you love me? And you're like, what do you mean do I love you? Didn't I just buy you the house? Didn't I just buy you the car? Didn't I just take you out to eat? Didn't I just do all these things for you? How could you ask me, do you love me? And what we don't understand is a lot of times we do that to God. God done redeemed us out of our darkness. He done loved us. He done gave his son so that in him we could be saved and reconciled unto God. He done allowed us through Jesus Christ to become children of God, that we are now walking children of God. Jesus said, Father, you've, I know that you love them just as you've loved me, that we have the same love that God loves Jesus with that he loves us with. God then made that available to us through Jesus Christ. And we still, in our, in our, in our, in our foolishness, turn to God and say, God, do you love me? Do you, do you still, God, and it's like, are, what kind of question is that? <laughs> you're my child. God, you're God. It's like, you're God's child. You think, if you, you think you love your child more than God loves his? You think it's possible? You think you can outlove God? It's impossible. Right? But sometimes our children have to go through things. Sometimes we have to discipline them. Sometimes we have to put pressure on them so that they grow. Sometimes we have to do different things to strengthen them and help them grow stronger. But you can never raise your mouth or your heart or your thought to ask God whether or not he loves you. You are sons. We are, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, we are sons and daughters of the almighty God. So that means you are God's child and he is your father through the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are in Christ and God has become your father. And if God is your father, he loves you like a father loves his children. But beyond that love, because the love of God is unlike any other love we could find anywhere else. 
So if you are in Jesus Christ, if you have accepted Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, if you know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and he is the door, the only way to the Almighty God, that there is no life outside of him, and you can do nothing apart from him, if you are in Jesus Christ, then you are a child of the Almighty God, and God loves you more than you, you love your own children, more than any father has ever loved their son. It's besides him, for he is the Almighty Father that loves his son. And loves us as his sons and daughters and his children that abide in his son. And we become sons and daughters in Jesus Christ. So if you are ever wondering if God loves you, yes, he 100% loves you. And part of that love is there's certain things you have to experience to prepare you, to keep you ready. Right. We don't we don't. God says his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. As far as the earth is from the heaven, so are his thoughts from our thoughts. So we don't always have understand the ways Right. Of our father. But we have to trust in our father. If you have a child, your child ain't always going to understand why they can't go hang out with their friends on a Tuesday evening. It doesn't make sense to them. You don't trust them. Why you don't trust me? Why you don't just let me go hang out with all my with my friends on a Tuesday night? And they don't understand. I remember being a child wanting to go out and, and I didn't understand why my dad wanted to keep me in the house. Why he didn't, he was, he was, and we used to go back and forth, but he, you know, I didn't understand it. But he, but once I got outside and I got old enough to really see what was outside, it all made sense why my dad didn't want me out in the street. Because there was nothing out there for me. So what I thought I wanted could have landed me in a situation that wouldn't have allowed me to be who I came to be. He was trying to protect me from the evils of the world. But all I saw was my father was trying to keep me in the house and, and di he didn't want me to have fun. He didn't want me to experience life. He got to experience life, but didn't want me to experience life. What kind of, I was a, I, what, what kind of fool was I to think that my dad didn't love me because he didn't want to let me go out and, 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 and drinking with my friends as a, as a teenager. I, 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 I didn't want to go do anything good, <laughs> right? I, got, as, as I thought I was getting experiences, but all I wanted to do was do things that were harmful. And I was mad because he didn't want to let me do it. But he was, we used to go back and forth on whether or not he would let me do it. I'm mad at me because my dad don't want, I'm mad at my dad because he don't want to let me go out and drink as a teenager with my friends and driving and drink, all, whatever we was doing, right? What kind of fool is, what, what kind of fools am I? So what kind of fool, what, what kind of fool was I? So I, I just say that to say, and, and you know, and me and my dad are a lot closer in, in age or whatever you want to call it in understanding than, I, than we are to God. So there's many things we just not going to understand because we caught in our flesh, our way, wanting what we want when we want it because we think we know what's best for us more than the almighty God. But newsflash, we don't. God loves us. He knows what's best for us. The Bible says those who endure to the end will be saved. Part of this walk is enduring. Everything's not always going to be sweet. We want as much sweet as we can. And I pray that we all get as much sweetness and grace as we can have. But it may not always be sweet. And when things ain't sweet, we have to love harder. When things ain't sweet, we have to love more. When things ain't sweet, we have to endure. And we have to show that our love ain't contingent upon if we feel good or not. Because God's love for us wasn't contingent upon on, on us be, or on who we were. We was unrighteous, killers, robbers, stealers, fornicators, homosexuals, everything else we were. And God didn't say, we didn't qualify for him to give his son for us. His love wasn't contingent upon who we were or how we felt toward him. We, wor we worshiped other gods and did every other thing but, but come to him. And he didn't say, well, he, he had, he, if anyone had a right to not love us, it was God. But he did not not love us because we weren't walking in the way that we were supposed to, not because we were unright. He still loved us and so much so that he gave his only begotten son to come in the flesh so that we could be redeemed onto him despite our evil, our destruction, our sin, our murder, our killing, our stealing, our, 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 our immorality, despite all of those things, he still gave his son so we could be reconciled onto him. And then in the same breath, we can receive that and we receive salvation, be turned over to God. And in the same breath, we can look to God and say, God, do you love me? Come on, guys. So I want to read a couple of verses as I begin to near the end. I just want to read a couple of verses. So I'm going to start with John 15. This is Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the wine, the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Right. So 
God says when a, when, a, when a branch bears fruit, God begins to prune the branch. So pruning, if you Google what pruning is, pruning is a, a process of cutting back. You kind of stripping and cutting away at the branch so that the branch can grow better or I'm not, you know, it can grow in a way that it will bear more fruit, right? So the Bible says God prunes, our, he prunes the branch so that it'll bear more fruit. So sometimes that pruning process, if you see what's happening to a tree, if a tree was a human being and somebody had to take a blade and cut away at the tree, sometimes that's a painful process. If the tree was a human being, I don't know, we don't know what trees feel, but if, a, if that tree was a person and you had to prune a person with a blade, that would be a painful experience. And then sometimes in that pain, you can feel like you're not loved, but the very virtue that God loves you so much to prune you so that you may bear more fruit so that greater is your reward is a greater testament to love than any feeling you have that you're not loved. You're being sometimes you're being cut away at, and this is I'm, and this is I'm talking about people that are not walking in sin, that are not that are not walking. If, you, if some people are suffering due to their sin, right? Some people go through suffering and they go through experiences due to their sin. But there are people that suffer and go through things due to them being branches that is ab- that are abiding in the vine of Jesus Christ, and they're being pruned and cut away at so that they bear more fruit, and that pruning process um, can be a painful process. So when you feel like, God, I don't know what I did wrong. What did I do? I, I, I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to do X, Y, and Z. What, I don't know what, did I do something wrong? And you, can, you, you don't know what you did wrong and you're feeling sad and you're just trying to figure out what you did wrong. Sometimes you did nothing wrong at all. But if the love of God is pruning you so that you bear more fruit for greater will be, greater is your reward when you do, that is the love. Let me, God prunes us so that we bear more fruit. So greater is the love, greater is the reward we have that we've bore more fruit because God loved us enough to prune us, but pruning ain't a comfortable experience. Pruning ain't a comfortable experience, but it's, it's, the pruning is love, Pruning is love, so that because you will bear more fruit and be more fruitful, right? So the the, the, the one the next verse I want to bring out before I wrap up the this 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 um this particular video here. This is a ver- This is a this is going to be a verse about the parable of the sower, right? The Bible says a sower went out. This is in Matthew thirteen, going through verse three and. F- Verse three and on onward. And he told them many things in parables saying, a sower went out to sow and he sowed some seeds. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they, did, where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and other thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some 60 and some 30. He who has ears, let him hear. So, so Jesus tells this parable, then he explains the parable. I'm gonna read the explanation and I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply it to this video before I close out. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the words of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in him, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. So whenever persecution arises, this person falls away, right? As for what was sowed among thorns, this is one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. So the, the, the point here is that the parable of the soil, I mean, some seeds are sown, and the moment that tribulation or persecution arises, they fall away. So the point of the matter is sometimes the enemy comes to steal the joy and the love of Christ that we receive when we receive Jesus Christ. The Bible says the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in their heart. So sometimes those feelings of you not you feeling like God doesn't love you, it can be the enemy trying to snatch away what's been sowed in your heart to convince you that God does not love you, that God has not forgiven you of your sins, that you should still feel guilty, that you should still feel ashamed, that you do not have any forgiveness, that God, that God doesn't know you, that this is all made up, that deliverance you had, that's not really deliverance. All the things that happen to you are not real. Sometimes the enemy is coming to try to sow lies and deception to steal the joy that you've received in your heart when you receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. So sometimes the demons that leave, they come back trying to deceive and convince you that, that you didn't really, that you're not really free, that you still need more deliverance, that you're still not healed, that you're still not quite what God needs you to be. And these are all lies. 
The Bible says there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. So if you are in Jesus Christ and you have ceased from sin, you cannot be condemned from anything that you've done in the past. You have to remember that in your mind. Take every thought captive to obey Jesus Christ. There is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. You cannot be condemned from anything of your past once you've come into Jesus Christ, ceased from sin. If you make a mistake, you repent and you, 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 you washed, right? But what I'm saying is that you do not, you cannot be condemned. For the things of the past. If you are living in sin, then you condemning yourself in your sin. You're already condemned, right? But if you are ceasing from sin and following the ways of God, your past has been erased. God says he will remember our sins no more. So if God doesn't re even remember our sins, why are we remembering our own? If we have confessed them and repented, believed in the name of Jesus Christ and been cleansed and freed of the things of old. We have to walk in faith knowing that we have been forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ and not let any enemy, no voice, no whisper condemn us because uh, they have no right to condemn us. For Jesus did not come to condemn the world, the Bible says, that we will all have life more abundantly. He came. So that's it, guys. That is the video that I got for today, guys. Peace, 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 man. Hit the like button, drop a comment in the comment section, and share the video with someone if they're feeling like God doesn't love them. Peace, guys. Peace, 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 and love. <laughs>